Gears 5 Metacritic dropped, and gamers are in a frenzy. But should they be? Let's talk about it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all y'all straight up, because you know the deal. I'm not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay, so, Gears 5 Metacritic. You know what I'm saying? Has dropped. But before we get too deep into what the score was, for those of you that live under a rock, Let's just provide a little bit of the background behind this whole ordeal, as I like to call the checkup. Let's do the checkup, okay? Gamers claim that Xbox has no games, right? All right, and what they mean by that moniker is that Xbox has no games that it helps pioneer, you know, whether it's first party or second party, it doesn't have any influential games under its footprint. In light of a long drought, particularly of triple A critically acclaimed exclusives, it looked like that Gears 5 would end that drought. Gamers were waiting in anticipation and expecting scores for Gears 5 to be up there with PlayStation 4's God of War. But man, were they surprised, you know what I'm saying? So let's get to the analysis, all right? So at the time of this recording, the Metacritic for Gears 5 is at an 86. Now you may be thinking to yourself, hold on MM2K, an 86 is not horrible. Well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is, my friends, that this 86 is well short of the God of War Metacritic of 94. And because of that big gap between PlayStation's, you know, uh, uh, prize game of this generation, God of War, and what appears to be what's gonna be Microsoft's or Xbox's prize game of this generation, uh, Gears 5. Because there's a big gap between those two games, this has gamers on both sides either delighted or dismay, okay? This has those particularly that are enthusiasts or fanboys of Xbox questioning the validity of Metacritic because of this. All right, so here's MM2K's thoughts all together. I get why the enthusiasts or the the uh, fanboys, the Xbox, as they like to, to, to coin them, I, I get why they may be a little perturbed, okay? We did a live showing of this Metacritic score um, as they were dropping from the website. And we we were shocked too by the 85, 86, and it dropped as low as 83 for on Xbox. At the time of this recording, it's even 81 on PC, but that's a totally different animal. And, and, and console-esque type games always score lower on PC. That's, that's a whole different kit and caboodle. With that being said, um, we were shocked too, because from everything that we've seen of Gears 5, particularly the night prior where Ninja, the, the streamer, who's now on Mixer and he left Twitch, he streamed about four straight hours of the game. And everything that I've seen of Gears 5 from his stream, everything that I've played, you know what I'm saying, from the beta, everything that I've either seen or played looks better in every single way than Gears 4. And this isn't a game where the iteration is that far off. Like it's, you know, it's decades later. So the, the expectations of a sequel are, are tremendously high. It's not like that, okay? Um, where, you know, like for instance, God of War. God of War, I think in, in the last God of War before this reboot was like maybe eight or nine years. The, the, pre the previous Gears was only three years ago right so that big of an overhaul shouldn't have reasonably been expected um and then you look at some of the individual scores that make up metacritic and you see like for instance us gamer who hammer gears 5 for being a traditional gears but they applaud un they applauded uncharted 4 for being an, a traditional uncharted so the litmus isn't fair and balanced and and, and it changes depends on it, it depends on it you know the reviewers bias right um and there goes the dreaded word uh media bias i think media bias exists i don't think it's an excuse um as far as what's quality and what's not quality but with that said if you take the implicit bias that's there and combine it with the fact that metacritic 
altogether is not an, an honest broker of being a pure aggregate of just scores, like some scores are weighed heavier than others, particularly this U.S. gamer. And the fact that, that uh, you know, it's evident that Metacritic doesn't look at these individual scores that they weigh heavier than others and say, hold on, your review system is in balance. Maybe we shouldn't weigh you that heavy. Being that that doesn't happen and Metacritic just puts everything together, gives certain scores a weight, and then whoop de doo you get, you get what you get. You guys are setting yourselves up for disaster, all right? So I don't feel bad for you. I, it, it's a shame that this happened, but I don't feel bad for you because you set yourself up for the okie doke, all right? You should have never relied on Meta anyway. Again, it's not made for you. It's not an honest aggregate of scores. These reviewers first and foremost favor story-driven games and indies, not gameplay-focused AAA titles, all right? They were given a bonus with God of War, and because God of War actually had good gameplay for once and the story-driven narratives that they love, that's why it scored so high. But without the, 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 the stellar or the base set and gameplay, they don't care. All right. And Xbox fans, the games that you like focus more on gameplay. So looking at what these reviewers say, um, the reviewers that make up the, the bulk of the uh, Metacritic aggregate, you're setting yourself up for disaster anyway. I'm going to give you an example. GameSpot, who is who has heavyweight within Metacritic, gave Gears 1 a 7. They gave Gears 2 a 9 and Gears 3 a 9.5, but they gave Gears Judgment a 7.5, which is higher than Gears 4 and Gears 5. <laughs> like, come on. You can't make this stuff up. So my XBOT brethren, stop looking at Metacritic, okay? I get the lore. Perception helps drive attention, but Xbox gamers and Xbox themselves need to steer clear away from these type of landing pads that deal nothing with or do not support the vehicles that you are flying in or trying to land in, all right? It's time for Xbox to develop meaningful data sets under its new uh, pathway, which is Game Pass, you know what I'm saying? That show a more positive light on the data sets that represent what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't rely on reviewers like GameSpot. You know what I'm saying? You just can't do it. So what do you do? You assure the gaming community by giving us statistics. You gotta give us statistics. Statistics like X amount of hours um, by X amount of gamers have been invested via Game Pass on X game. You gotta put stuff like that out there. Cause if you don't, then you leave the fate of your titles, the fate of your ecosystem in the hands of a system that's not built for you, period. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Because like I always say, it doesn't matter what I think. But with that said, if you did like what I had to say, you can catch me on the corner of every boulevard. Check out the links below to follow me. Yo, we do a show. It's called Scram Punks. Me, Nethel, Snowbody, Dirt Griggity. We all do it together. Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check out hashtag ScramPunks for more information. Check out my brother in the broadband bullies. We are out here doing the damn thing. So check that out. Definitely check all the links below to that. And check me out on hndc.live, which is the official website of the Hard Knock Digital Culture. And with that being said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.